Scientists have discovered the strongest evidence yet that one of the most commonly found viruses in our bodies is responsible for one of the most common and debilitating autoimmune diseases. For many decades, scientists have suspected that multiple sclerosis or MS is related to the Epstein-Barr virus. And now they have evidence that it does. MS is a disease where the protective layers of cells around the brain and spinal cord are damaged. This causes a range of neurological symptoms, including trouble with vision, trouble with coordination and other neurological disorders. The Epstein-Barr virus or EBV is a herpes virus and is very commonly found in humans. It commonly causes mono or mononucleosis and can also cause Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, researchers have early evidence that this virus is what causes MS for which there is no cure. In this video, we'll look at what the researchers found and how they established the connection between MS, multiple sclerosis and Epstein-Barr virus. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. So what is multiple sclerosis? MS is an autoimmune disease. Any autoimmune disease is one where the body's own immune system attacks the body because it thinks there's something within the body that is foreign and must be removed. Such autoimmune diseases can be caused by infections or by genetic defects or mutations. MS is a type of demyelinating disease. We have seen earlier that myelin is the protective covering around the brain and the spinal cord and demyelination is loss of this protection. So then nerve cells are exposed along the brain and the spinal cord. It is the most common kind of immune disorder that affects the central nervous system and it tends to affect women more than men. Those who have MS have their nerve cells slowly affected. The symptoms from this degeneration ranges from digestive problems to cognition problems to anxiety and depression to mobility problems like shaking and dizziness to muscle problems like spasms and extreme fatigue to numbness and loss of sensation and coordination problems like loss of balance to erectile dysfunction and other sexual problems to also sensory problems as well as commonly problems with vision. All these symptoms don't manifest simultaneously. They come and go in attacks or in episodes and they can range from mild to severe. Each year, globally, over 2 million people are affected by MS and slightly fewer than 20,000 people die. There is no cure for MS and life expectancy is about 10 years less than the average population. There are now, of course, many immunomodulatory drugs that have been approved and monoclonal antibody treatments for the disease that are under trials. But the results are not yet clear from antibody cocktails. And currently, the drugs that are approved seem to be moderately effective at decreasing the number of attacks or episodes. But overall, even these drugs' effectiveness is unclear due to lack of enough trials and data. Cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT has also shown to be slightly effective at reducing the extreme fatigue that comes with the disease. MS is more common among those who live away from the equator. It is not considered a hereditary disease, but there is some genetics at play. In smaller indigenous communities that tend to marry within each other, it is found more commonly. Closer to the equator, it is more common in Parsi communities and even among Palestinians. It is also found commonly in Canada's Inuit groups and in New Zealand's Maori. It was also thought that smoking independently raises the risk of MS as well. Researchers have for decades suspected an infectious agent at play because there is evidence of infection in affected patients' cerebrospinal fluids. But researchers didn't know what infection. Previous studies have shown that those who've never had EBV are at a lower risk of developing MS. And now we have the largest ever study into the cause of MS, which established a connection with the virus. 
to study the hypothesis that the EBV virus causes MS, researchers from US and Europe embarked on a 20-year study. They monitored US military recruits over a period of 20 years and there were more than 10 million young adults who were free of HIV who were a part of this trial. Of these, 955 were diagnosed with MS over the course of the study. The researchers found that once someone contracted the virus, their risk of MS went up 32-fold. The risk was not raised this way with any other infection from any other virus, including viruses that are similar to EBV. In patients who had been infected with EBV, the researchers also found biomarkers of neuroaxonal degeneration. This is when axons or the part of the nerve cell that transmits messages from the brain to other parts of the body starts getting damaged. More importantly, they noticed these signs of degeneration after seroconversion against EBV, which means after antibodies were produced against the virus. Thus, they were able to confirm that it was after the immune system started to attack the virus that it also started to attack the nerve cells. Taking their findings from their large cohort and long duration of study, they conclude that the results they had in hand could not be explained by any known risk factor for MS and they concluded that EBV is the leading cause of MS. The Epstein-Barr virus is one of the nine known human herpes viruses and it is one of the most common viruses in humans. It is most known for causing mono or infectious mononucleosis. EBV spreads through bodily fluids, most commonly by oral transmission of saliva and genital fluids. Most people in countries where it's endemic tend to get infected as children and develop protection, such as Uganda. In wealthier nations, children don't get infected. So when teenagers and anyone older are infected, they contract mono and spread the virus. As with other kinds of herpes viruses, this virus can also actually infect the immune system cells and then lie latent, jumping into action at some other point in the future when the immune system is more compromised. In such cases, it could cause more severe symptoms. Even in this study, when the researchers compared all of the very first samples taken from individuals, they found that only 5.3% of them were EBV negative and had not contracted the virus. Most of the people were younger than 20 and among the ones who developed MS, symptoms started to show on an average 10 years after first sampling. There is currently no vaccine against EBV and the virus is actually not that well understood. And in fact, the same goes for MS. But now with this study that had a convincingly large sample size as well as study duration, scientists have managed to establish the first major connection into understanding both better.